see my fringe? It's going down this way. It should actually be going down that way, but that's very unlucky. You know why? Yes, bad hair day, it's Friday the 13th. But, hey, it doesn't all have to be grim and bad news. No, because it's what could be unlucky for one person might be lucky for another. Yes, we don't want bad vibes. We want good vibes. I want you to email in your good luck stories. Perhaps this morning you got up, you went to the bus stop, and the bus was waiting for you. And the bus driver even accepted change. Or maybe you actually remembered to lift the toilet seat while you were doing your business. If you're a boy, if you're a girl, perhaps you remembered to keep it down. Or maybe you lost yourself down the back of the couch, but your dad found you while he was rummaging around for that pound. Come on, email me at cbbc at bbc.co.uk. But remember, you've only got till 12 o'clock. But hey, you're in luck right now because it's smart. Welcome to Smart. Today we're... Uh, what are you doing? We're warming up, man. We've got a lot to get through today. We're focusing our mental and physical energies until we are one with the show. Right. Ooh. Oh! 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 Well, now that I'm well and truly warmed up, I'm going to show you how to add action and energy to your art. Now, here is an illustration of a footballer. He's got no hair at the moment, and it's not because I'm slack with my work. No, it's because he keeps changing his hairstyle. So I've left that right until the last minute to add in. Now, it's a bit longer than normal, so we'll just add some height. Yes, I'm going to give you bouffant hair, I'm afraid. Right, lovely. Now he's also quite famous for wearing jewellery, so I'm going to add in some bling bling there. Earring. Now if this last little hint doesn't tell you who he is, right, just put a seven on there. It's because you just don't like football, okay? Now, still looking quite static, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, by transforming this illustration, how to add energy and dynamics to your work. Just by using these straight lines. Just one line there as a sort of a horizon line there for our pitch and just put these lines in around his arm. Now that arm is starting to look a lot stronger already. Right, that's our first layer on. Now, gonna add a second layer of lines. Now these are a lot shorter and quicker. So that movement that you see is really going to come out onto the paper. So you wanna be quite fast there. And it's a case of what you put in to it, you get back out. Right, just working around the hair because we really want to draw attention to that hairdo. But I'm quite, quite pleased with that. Just go along the top there. Now this style that I'm using is a very similar and can be seen in manga comics. Now, that is an oriental comic book where whenever they want to add action and dynamics to their illustrations, this is what they do. So it works brilliantly here for our footballer. Right, so that's our second layer. Now I'm just going to cross over those lines there, like a cross-hatching effect, which is literally just going across your existing lines on the page. 
Now, I'm going to stop there with two layers, but you can carry on going as many layers as you like until you get it as dynamic as you want. And there we have it, a transformation from our static previous footballer to our superhero ready for 90 minutes. But it doesn't stop there. Here we have another illustration of one of the slowest creatures on the earth, a snail. But look what happens when you add lines to it. Superb. Hoi! Hey! Hoi! What do you think? I focus my mind and now I have become Hoi! One! You've been one for quite a while, quite frankly. It's not working, is it? No. Oh. Venetian artist Canaletto started his artistic career as a painter of backdrops for the theatre, but he went on to create the most talked about views of Venice. During his lifetime, the city underwent major architectural changes, and many artists were called upon to decorate the new buildings, often with pictures of the blossoming city itself. Canaletto jumped at the chance to leave his theatrical roots and concentrated on more realistic paintings, such as this, the Piazza San Marco with the Basilica. Works like this show off his trademark skills, such as his knowledge of perspective. If you follow the parallel lines on either side of the square, they meet at a point in the distance known as the vanishing point and help to create the illusion of a 3D space. But the work is also an example of his attention to detail and his awesome ability to capture natural light. Time for a tomb tip. Cartoon expressions. How do you draw cartoon expressions? Well, as you can see, this little chappy here is expressionless. So, let's start off by giving him a nice, happy face. Now, you see, when you do a smile, if you look at me, all your expressions lift up. However, when you're angry, all your expressions drop down. So, your eyes become heavy, so do your eyebrows, and then your mouth upturns. Very angry. Now, how about if you're worried? <clears throat> You see? <laughs> your mouth begins to pucker up like that, you see? So, you do a little dot in your face like that, and there you have one worried chappy. Yet when you're scared, all your features become huge and massive. So the mouth opens up and the hair sticks on end like that. I tell you what, why don't you build up a whole cartoon library full of expressions? And who knows, you could soon be a top tuner. More Toon Tips next time. Zoological Park. I'm here because I've heard the animals around these parts make quite an impression. Where you look, there are vibrant colours and intricate patterns on display, which I intend to capture as humanely as possible.
trying to get a general idea of the pattern, so I'm not sketching in every single shape, just a few. You'll see why in a moment. Like that. <laughs> I'm also trying to capture the animal in a typical pose. Again, no detail, just the outline. Well, I've finished all my sketching, now it's time for some lino printing. You've probably seen lino in your art lessons at school, and it's also available in all craft shops, and it is perfect for printing. I'm cutting the surface with a lino cutter, keeping my fingers well out of the way so that I'm creating a printing block. Think of it as a permanent potato print. Now, the sketch I did has come in really handy for reference. Here's the messy bit. This is water-based ink. Now, the colour of the ink and the colour of the paper you print on will give you a two-tone print. So, with a sheet of white paper, like I've got here, and this lino print, this is easy. You can see we end up with, give it a good press, zebra stripes, giraffe, crocodile, tiger. The Jaguar is slightly more tricky as there are three colours and there's a pattern within a pattern. You can see there's the black outline and the brown in the centre and then on top of that, the black dots. But we can get round that problem easily. The trick is to draw the pattern again using tracing paper and the outline of the lino is also important because then I can line the corners up exactly. You'll see why later. You now need a second lino block, exactly the same size as the first, and lined up as before. And on this one, I'm only tracing the inner parts of the pattern. I finished making my prints, and again, the colour of the paper matches the background colour of the Jaguar's coat. And the first print to add is the lighter one. There we go. Now, if I line this block up, which has the black ink on it, onto the other print, we should get the desired result. Superb! And of course, you can repeat this process so that you've completed the whole page. Now, remember those outlines I drew earlier? Well, I've used them to create some stencils. And when I cut round them, I'm left with quite a menagerie. thing is, not a single artist was harmed in the making of this film. Not yet, anyway. <laughs> Today's tip is about painting using a sponge effect. So, I have some old sponge here. I'm just going to dab it into my paint. Don't want to load it up too much, though, so just take some of that excess off and we'll just Whack it straight onto the page. So we're going to start quite heavy with that paint on the right-hand side and just, doesn't matter if it thins out as you go to the left, because that's adding part of our effect of our painting. Right, now I'm going to use a darker green. Again, just get rid of some of that excess, because we really want some of that texture to come through on the sponge. And we're just going to add some shade by just, again, using that dabbing motion. Now we want to put a trunk on our picture. So we're not going to paint it on, we're going to follow through with this sponge effect and just dab that down and just bring it up through the leaves a bit. And there you have it, painting using a sponge effect. You can again add a bit more shade there. And you don't have to stop there, you could do your whole painting using that effect. Why don't you give it a go? Has your picture got into our gallery? Karina has created a brilliant blustery day collage picture by making the kite's hair and scarf look like they're blowing in the wind.
Kate Mitchell's done this very interesting pencil cartoon with a clever use of shading. Reminds me of one of the smart team. Can't think who. Jodie, age nine, has managed to paint a superb 3D cityscape using flat brush strokes. Keep sending in your artwork and remember, smart sketchbooks are on offer for all those shown. Whilst they get ready for the next item, I've got time to show you how to make a funny face cloth. First thing you need is a flannel and then get some old kitchen sponge like this and draw some features onto the bobbly side. There's a nice smiley mouth there and then I've got some eyes, some eyebrows and then some eyelids and some eyeballs as well drawn on and then some teeth and in this big nice thick sponge there I'm going to do some extra small teeth so that it can make it a little bit 3D and once you've cut all of that out all you have to do is flip it over and start sticking it on. So I've got the nice mouth there, put that down there, perhaps on a little jaunty angle. Then I'll bring the eyes in, put them there like that. The eyebrows, I can put a little bit of expression in, like that. But where all the expression's mainly going to come is in the teeth, because I can make this one look quite goofy if I do that. Then you need to stick those down and you're away. But I've done some others for you to have a look at. What about this one? The mouth there looks quite cheeky on that fella, doesn't it? And then, because of the pointy teeth here, he looks quite scary. But my personal favourite, with a big pink spongy mouth, very feminine. Oh, Why don't you hey, give it a try, hey, Mark? Hey, explain! Hey, oh, mercy, pretty muller. I got me a big game later on, so I'm just warming up. <laughs> no, I meant the hair. What? <laughs> yeah, what? You really know nothing of the modern game, do you? Even David Beckham hasn't tried this, look. <laughs> I wonder why. Oh, game on! <laughs> of Mark's quite extraordinary performance out there today. Well, uh, in many respects, he's quite literally out there on his own, which could leave him vulnerable in defence.
can see it's a game of three thirds. Can he maintain the pace? To be fair to the lad, his paint's running well, and although he's famous for his own goals, he looks on form today. Technique, fantastic bit of sponging. They think the painting's over. It is now. Mark, it's a fantastic result. Did it all go to plan? Well, we just practised a few moves in training and it just paid off today. Can we expect more from you next time? Well, the smart team's very strong. We've got the best mm -hmm. fans around and I'm sure we'll stay on top mm. throughout the season. You heard it here first. Plenty more where that came from. So for all the art action you'll ever need, stick with smart. Post your gallery pictures to Smart, PO Box 5053, London W12 6AW. And if you'd like a fact sheet, they're available on the CBBC website. Just one more thing before we go. Going to show you a nice way to display a day's finds. Right, got an old flower pot here. Going to take some cheesecloth, pop that in there. An oasis ball. Got some old string here, just give it a real ship look about it. Just tie that up at the front, like that. Now I've been beach combing, so I've got lots of shells. So I'm going to arrange my shells at the front, starting off small, but I'm not going to stick them down until I'm happy with the whole arrangement. Got some seaweed as well some natural sponge, a bit of wood there to look like driftwood. Got some feathers as well that I found, maybe off a seagull. So I'm just going to put those in at the back and you're just building your way up there. And what you should end up with is something like this, which is a smart way to display a day's finds. Good stuff there. Yes, and Smart does return on Monday. 